So we've talked about the, the lowest couple layers of the atmosphere. The troposphere, that's the lowest layer. That's the part that we live in. That's where 90% of the atmosphere is. That is the uh, place where all the weather is. It's the, one of the thinnest parts of the atmosphere. Um, the temperature drops with altitude in the troposphere. Uh, above the troposphere, we just finished talking about the stratosphere. During the stratosphere, you're producing ozone. That ozone is absorbing UV light. And so the higher you go, the warmer it gets. Now, on the other hand, um, above that, the air is so incredibly thin that it doesn't really do a whole lot. There's not a lot of absorption in there. And so basically it's back to being similar to the troposphere. The higher you go, the cooler it gets. And so uh, that, that is the mesosphere. Uh, it ranges in altitude from about 50 kilometers, that's about the top of the stratosphere, up to about 80 to 85 kilometers. Uh, it's really hard to say where the top of it really is. Uh, the mesosphere, is is one of the least studied parts of the atmosphere and that's because it is so thin uh, at the bottom of the mesosphere the pressure is only 0.2 percent of sea level pressure so this is almost no air at all here airplanes fly perfectly well in the troposphere and the lower part of the stratosphere so, uh, in fact, commercial airliners like to fly in the lower stratosphere because there's no, there's no convection there and no turbulence. And the air is really thin, so there's little air resistance. So, uh, above that, you have some military planes that can fly a little bit higher, um, but they can only go so high. And so, if you really want to study the stratosphere, you launch balloons. And the, the weather balloons can go up all the way to the top of the stratosphere and just barely maybe to the, the lower part of the mesosphere. But the problem is at that point, um, the balloons can't go any higher because there's so little air up there that you're not getting any buoyancy. And so uh, the balloons can't get any higher than that. And uh, spacecraft can orbit the Earth and they orbit up here, you know, in the uh, uh, well over 100, because uh, it had to be above the von Karman line, so well over 100 um, kilometers up. And so, so that means that spacecraft can't really orbit inside the mesosphere and study it. They can orbit actually inside the thermosphere and study it. So you can study the thermosphere this way. Um, Aircraft and balloons can study the stratosphere. So how do you study the mesosphere? And that's very hard. Uh, about the best way of doing it is actually shoot a rocket up, and the rocket goes up here and comes back down, and it passes through the mesosphere up and down. And so we call these sounding rockets. And that's really about the only way we have of reliably measuring it. Uh, there are some ground-based uh, instruments that can look up and, and, and try to thing, measure it from below. There's some satellites that can look down and try to measure it from above. But actually being there in it measuring it, sounding rockets, that's about it. Most meteors, when they hit the atmosphere, they burn up in the mesosphere because that's where the air is just getting thick enough to start that process. There are a handful of what we call noctilucent clouds. Noctilucent clouds are mesospheric clouds. They are very high altitude because they're way above the stratosphere even. They're not caused by the same process that makes clouds in the troposphere. Uh, this is material that's trapped in the atmosphere. A lot of it we actually think comes from above. Uh, so we think it's from meteors and so forth because we see more noctilucent clouds during a meteor ship or shortly after a meteor shower than we do at other times. They're called noctilucent because after sunset, uh, near, near the surface of the Earth, the uh, upper part of the atmosphere is still getting a little bit of sunlight, and so it can scatter off of these clouds up here. And so noctilucent means night shining clouds. Uh, they tend to be most prominent uh, in the very far north and southern latitudes.
Above the mesosphere is the thermosphere, and it goes from about 80 kilometers up to 500 kilometers. There's almost no air in here, um, which is why the space station is actually orbiting inside the thermosphere. Now, it is still bumping into air molecules now and then, and that does eventually cause it to slow down, and so it has to be pushed to a higher orbit every now and then uh, because of that. Uh, but the space, space station, it is technically in the thermosphere. And, and again, you know, we talk about this as being outer space. Uh, to give you an idea, it's just how thin the thermosphere is. There's almost nothing there. In the thermosphere, it's called the thermosphere because the higher you go, the faster the molecules are moving. Uh, they're absorbing some energy from the sun. Sunlight's hitting them and bouncing them around, knocking them around. So the higher you go, then the faster the molecules move. Well, the speed of a molecule, average kinetic energy, that's how we define temperature. So we would say the temperature is increasing with altitude. The ionosphere is like the lower part of the thermosphere. Uh, in this region, then you can ionize the atoms. These ionized... Uh, uh, atoms will actually reflect certain radio waves. And so short wave radio and AM radio will reflect off the ionosphere. Now, the, the level of the ionosphere, how high it is, uh, shifts up and down depending on whether it's daytime or nighttime. Uh, so at nighttime, the level is, in a different, is different than it is in the daytime, and so AM radio signals can actually bounce around the curvature of the Earth. They can bounce around the curvature of the Earth a little bit anyway off the ionosphere. So, so for example, um, as you're driving away from the DFW area, you will eventually lose all the FM stations, but you'll still be able to pick up a couple of the most powerful AM stations for a little while longer. Um, at nighttime, you can pick up KRLD from almost anywhere in the country. In fact, there are certain radio stations at night, AM stations, you can pick up from Nashville and New York and Chicago at nighttime uh, because it's bouncing off the ionosphere. Uh, shortwave radio bounces off the ionosphere and also bounce off the ocean too. So that means that shortwave radio operators could, could communicate with someone in Europe by signals that bounce off the ionosphere and the ocean and the ionosphere and the ocean and so forth uh, uh, around the world. So, uh, so this is the ionosphere. Above the thermosphere, there are a handful of still oxygen and nitrogen atoms. And they are just out there flying around. They are part of Earth's atmosphere, but these are loose atoms, they're, and it's really hard to say they're part of the atmosphere at all. They're just loose atoms. In some cases, they're orbiting uh, Earth, uh, so some of them are actually orbiting Earth. Some of them are things kicked up, which are coming back, which are going to come back down later. They're big parabolic trajectories. Some of them are achieving escape velocity, and they're leaving. And so this, these handful of molecules out here, they're just out there, we call the exosphere. And the exosphere can actually extend upwards to several thousand kilometers. And so um, really these atoms almost never run into each other because it is so thin. So the exosphere, um, some, some uh, people consider this part, the outermost part of the atmosphere, and then some people just consider it just stray atoms that just happen to be hanging around Earth. So, uh, so some books include it in the list of atmospheric layers, and some of them don't.